Hey there. Hi. Hello. 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 Hi. 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 Thank you for joining me on the second episode of Mom Pause with Olushe. Thank you for joining. For those who will be watching on the replay, I truly, truly appreciate every single one of you. Hi. Hi, Neka. Thank you for joining. Good to see you here. It's been a while. Hello, everybody. Hi, sis. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for joining. Yes, we're talking about internet safety for your kids. And we're talking about the second episode. Last week, Tuesday, we talked about the dangers on the internet. Last week. And then today, we're talking about the apps, uh, you know, that your children are exposed to. And the different risk factors that, yes, it's been a while. The different risk factors that are on the internet. Thank you for joining. Please don't forget to share. Don't forget to share this broadcast. Don't forget to... Also, follow me if you're not following me for all those who will join in later on. Thank you for watching. For those on the replay, thank you for also coming back to watch. All right. So, here we go. Um, the last time I was here, we talked about four major threats that your children are exposed to on the internet. And um, we looked at some of those things. I, I mentioned pornography. Pornography, I mentioned, I mentioned sexual predators, cyberbullying, and I talked about damaged reputations. Okay, so pornography, sexual predators, cyberbullying, damaged reputations. If you were not able to join in, join me on that last episode, please, uh, after this video, just... Um, Make sure you watch the replay so you can catch the full gist about that one. My name is Ulu Shayashiru, and I am the founder of Moms Achieving Purpose. Moms Achieving Purpose, thank you for the hearts. Keep it coming. Thank you so much. Moms Achieving Purpose is a, is a community for mothers who want to be more intentional about their parenting and who also want to fulfill their purpose. So it's not just about helping them, supporting them through their motherhood journey. We also support them through that process of them embracing and fulfilling their God-given passion and purpose. So very quickly, I'm going to be sharing with you a few of those apps that we use, very innocent apps, okay, that we use every day, all the time, and all the various risk factors that are associated with those apps. And the next episode, that will be next week, Tuesday, I'll be talking to you about the strategy that you can, that you can use to safeguard your children from all these dangers that are available, that are there, that, they are, that, that their children are prone to on the internet. So, today I'm sharing with you just a few of those apps like Facebook, regular apps, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, you know, Periscope, all those things and the various risk levels, the various risk factors that are associated with all these um, apps. So, I'll share a few with you. I mean, there are so many apps on the internet, so you, I, I'm sure you know that we can't really talk about everything uh, today in one broadcast. Okay, so I'm just going to pick a few of them and just share with you about what the dangers are for your children. So first of all, I'll talk about Facebook. Facebook is, I mean, with over 1 billion users, really, what can I say? Facebook is the king of social media till date, you know, over 1 billion users on Facebook. 350 million photos are uploaded daily on facebook think about that think about that 350 million photos daily 350 million photos on a daily basis think about that and to date we've had about 250 billion photos uploaded to facebook till date it's a king of social media indeed you know a lot of us are on facebook a lot of us are most people are on facebook you know uh, and some some of us use the app maybe on the mobile phone some of us use the, uh, um, you know, go through the website at facebook.com to, you know, to access Facebook. And uh, amazingly, Facebook's app store rating is age four plus. Think about it. Even though Facebook tells you you should be 13 before you can use Facebook, but on the app store is age four. So anybody above the age of four can download Facebook. Think about it. <laughs> Just imagine that. Things you should know about Facebook. Privacy is possible on Facebook. You can set your privacy settings. You can make sure that only the people that, you, that are your friends can see your posts. So many things you can put in place, you know, for Facebook. But one thing I want to, 
to shout loud and clear to you today is that there is no privacy on the web. Privacy does not exist on the web. Don't forget to share the video to your friends. Don't forget, don't forget to share. Privacy, it doesn't exist on the, on the internet. There is no such thing as privacy on the internet. All right, so all of us share things on Facebook all the time. And we know our children, teenagers, typically, as is their typical behavior, like to share and overshare sometimes. When they share things they shouldn't be sharing, they share, you know, um, sensitive information that they have no business sharing on Facebook. You know, they, they use their real phone numbers, they, they, they turn their location on. And like, we, I, like I said in my previous, um, you know, broadcast, that we have sexual predators everywhere. These people are there out to prey on our young children. So that's why it's important for us to educate them, enlighten them about the content they need to share, what is appropriate to share, what is not appropriate to share. Let them know so that they don't keep oversharing things that they have no business sharing. Okay? Um, and of course, on Facebook, I mean, you have, we have an endless number of inappropriate people. Inappropriate people just out to spam you, just out to do evil. Plainly, you know, out to do evil. We have people sharing inappropriate photos and all that. So many things you can actually access. Your children can click on links that take them from Facebook to another website. Those things are there for them. Yes, you can block some things. You can filter some things out. But bottom line, is social, Facebook is social media. So automatically, this means that you need to have your, you know, your guards in place. You need to enlighten your children about the correct use of the internet. You need to let them know how to use Facebook well. Let them know what to share, what not to share. Let them know how to use it well. That is that for Facebook. On the other side of Facebook is Facebook Messenger. Facebook Messenger is the messenger app for Facebook. Some people use it, some people don't. As, as long as you have a Facebook uh, account, you are encouraged to use Facebook Messenger, right? Now that we have Facebook stories, we have all those things, Insta, you know, like, just like Instagram is there as well. People chat through Facebook. And with any chat, any chat um, app, any messaging, messaging app, is always the risk of sharing pornographic content. Always the risk of your children sexting. Always the risk of your children sharing inappropriate sexual photos, videos, things they have no business sharing. Photos of, photos of themselves doing things that they shouldn't be sharing. And don't forget that a lot of times, our children they have friends today... Tomorrow, that same friend could turn around and say, I'm no longer your friend. And because of that, those, those people use those same things against your children. So, yes, that's why it's important for us to, you know, educate them. They can, there's the danger of sex thing, of photo video sharing, of all those things there. Bottom line is that, same way with any messaging app, let your children know how, what to do. The younger ones have no business being there anyway. They have no business being there because it is such a public thing. And anybody can hack into another person's account and have access to all those information. Just imagine that. That's why it's not, it's not, it's not very wise to share things via um, you know, messaging apps such as Facebook. So when I'm talking about Instagram. Instagram is another social media app. And um, you know, <laughs> with Instagram comes the, the, the temptation to always share pictures. Of course, things you need to know, to know about Instagram. Pornography is always one thing there. Because Instagram is, is based on sharing of pictures and videos, there is plenty of... Hi, thank you for joining us, one. Thank you for joining. There's plenty of pornographic content there on the internet. Plenty of pornographic content on, on Instagram. Okay? Yes, you may not be able to find them up there and all that, but using the right, the right hashtags, you will find what you're looking for on, on Instagram. Hashtags are huge. And once you click on it, it can take you anywhere. You, you can never tell what you will find there. And let me also let you know today, we talked about cyberbullying the last time. Cyberbullying is one of the things that your children are exposed to on the internet as a threat. Instagram is the number one self-esteem. Bayception, thank you for joining. Self-esteem killer, number one self-esteem killer on social media. Instagram is, it ranks at, at the top of it. Because about sending all the on flick pictures with the filters, your children start feeling like, you know, they're not up to someone else's standard and all that. 
that danger is always there is the number one self-esteem killer. It has significant impact on the self-esteem of young people, especially young girls. You know, they see these perfectly posed photos, getting the most attention, and they start to compare themselves, you know. Sometimes the comments that other people post about their own content that they share, they share a picture and someone else, and someone says something really nasty, something really, um, you know, very vicious to your children. That threat is always there. Damaging stuff to your children, things that can really ruin, damage them, you know, damage their, their, their fragile emotions. Those, that threat is always there. And of course, the, the children also have access, they, they have the ability to set their, their accounts to private so that only those people who, who, who are following them can have access to seeing their videos and photos so that way they can control it a bit. They should also put, put their guard location in place. They shouldn't let everyone know where they are. I, like I said earlier, social predators are always on the, on the move looking for the innocent ones to prey upon, you know, the gullible ones to prey upon. So let your children know that they should also... Be careful about sharing location and all that. And of course, with, with, from, from Instagram, your children have access to click links out of Instagram. And that takes them to, you never can tell what will be, what will be on the other side of that Instagram link. You can never tell what will be on the, on the, on the other side of, of that Instagram link. So you, that's it. That's something you have to consider when you give yourself, your children access to all these social media sites. You know, you have to be careful. So Instagram is, is on the front line of cyberbullying. Parents often miss the signs. Some, some bullying, you know, you see obvious bullying. A lot of times, it's just overt, overt bullying, you know, through malicious posts, through funny content and all that. So you have to be careful. Some child sits behind their fake Instagram accounts and just starts to say things that are untrue, unkind, Visual statements about your child. These things are things you need to watch out for, look out for as your children use social media and as they use internet. Discourage your younger ones from using the, the younger ones. Let you know, even with the older ones, monitor what they do. Try and just get a feel of how they're feeling, or of what is going on in their minds through these things. Instagram has a very dark side in terms of content and potential impact on self-image if left unmonitored. All right, so be careful how you allow your children access to, you know, to, um, to, 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 to Instagram, okay? So I'm, I'm talking about Periscope. We're on Periscope, right? So I have to mention Periscope. A stranger in your daughter's bedroom. Ha, ha, ha. Periscope. Periscope is, is a live streaming app, like we know, like I'm doing right now, right? Uh, you know, and with everything that is live streaming, your children have, have, have a tendency to overshare sometimes too. They share things that they shouldn't be sharing. They could take live videos of themselves doing things they should not really be sharing on social media. It's risky. You know, friends, the comments that, that, they, that could come to them could be vicious comments, things that they really do not want, um, you know, that you don't want your children listening to. Sometimes these things are, are um, you know, can, can, feel, can make them feel bad, can impact on their self-esteem, Okay. So, so, you know, so yeah, anybody who has access to Twitter, has access to Periscope, has the, has the access, you know, so you can choose whether you want to use it or not. Porn, pornography is out, outlawed on, on Periscope, but you can still, they are still there somewhat. All right. There's still, yes, the community guidelines say no pornography and all that, but sometimes these things are shared. What can you do? Okay. So yeah, bottom line is that Parents should take extreme caution, extreme caution when deciding if their younger kids should use this app based on these risk factors that I've talked about. Be careful, let your children be careful, educate them all the time about what they should share, what they shouldn't share, what is appropriate content, what is not appropriate content, and all that. Yes. So now I'm going to talk about Netflix. Netflix is just a place to watch videos, to watch movies. It's a place where we just put um, content, content is uploaded on, on Netflix. And with the content comes the risk of your children having exposure to all these content. So a lot of things are there on Netflix. Okay, you can set parental control on Netflix. That's the beautiful part of it. But without this parental com control, inappropriate videos are everywhere. So you need to be careful. You need to make sure that your children, you know, you put appropriate things in place for your children 
to you know um, so that they will not they will not stumble on inappropriate contents and when they stumble on them let them know what to do let them understand the risk involved let them know what to do if per chance they study and um, they stumble on um, these inappropriate content on on Netflix okay so Twitter as well talk about Twitter a bit Twitter I mean 140 characters you share about share things on Twitter small like it looks like oh just text no big deal about Twitter right but the truth of the matter is that there's a lot of things hidden things that your children can be exposed to on Twitter okay because Twitter can also be accessed through the website all right too many voices on Twitter too many people saying all sort of things. People who have no business talking are there on Twitter talking. What can you do? You can shut them up. Anybody can have access to Twitter, Twitter accounts. So if you allow your children to have on 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 um, you know unreserved access to Twitter, they also have access to all these things, to all these people. Too many voices, too many people. Too anybody can be there. You know? Anybody can be there. Twitter also has its subtle pornography being being, um, you know, being, being touted, if I can put it that way, on Twitter. You need to be careful. Porn, pornography is everywhere. As long as, um, it's, it's, it's not just about words. Pornography is also there on Twitter. Reputation, cyberbullying, all those things are also the risks that are involved. So you see trolls coming for someone just because they see something that people don't agree with. And then you see people bullying other people. Adults bullying other adults. Imagine what they will do to your young children. You know? Their already fragile emotions are shattered because someone is, people are just all over them. Trolling them and just saying, saying horrible stuff about them. You know? So, yes. We need to let them know. In fact, bottom line, Twitter is just, it makes me nervous as an adult. Not talk of, as a, you know, we're not talk of allowing our children to have access to it. If you want your children in fact, I don't even encourage you to have, allow your children to have access to Twitter because it is just too delicate. All right, it's too delicate. Anybody can l click any link from Twitter and it's just too delicate. Please be careful how you allow your children access to those kind of places. YouTube. <laughs> YouTube is a king of video sharing websites, all right? It's part of the Google family. So it's one of the Google apps. Imagine that. A hundred hours of video are uploaded every single minute on YouTube. Think about it. That, isn't that mind-boggling? <laughs> Think about it. Every single minute as we are talking here right now, hundred hours of video are uploaded every single minute on YouTube. Multiply that by 60 minutes for one hour. Multiply that by, by 24 hours for one day. Now imagine how much content is on YouTube. Okay. There's pornography, of course, pornography is everywhere on YouTube. Everywhere on YouTube. There's so much inappropriate material out there on YouTube. And it's not hard to get it. While you're on one video watching something seemingly innocent, some other thing pops up at the corner telling you, you can watch this also. A recommended video to watch. Imagine if you left your children to watch things by themselves on YouTube. What would happen? They could just easily click on anything, you know, and it takes them to some form of funny stuff. That you want them, you don't want them having access to. Yes, YouTube launched a kid friendly YouTube app, YouTube Kids. It filters out most of the junk. And, you know, with monitoring from, from you as a parent, as, a, you know, you can also help your children. You know, you can, they can use that, that one and all that. But even at that, you still need to keep watching them. You still need to keep, don't leave them to watch videos by themselves. Do not. Do not, please, do not, do not allow them. Parental control is lacking in YouTube. Please, just be careful, all right? Long story short, YouTube, there's no guarantee for anything on YouTube. You, don't, you never can tell. Hi, Mod, Modoga, thank you for joining. I hope I said that right. Thank you for being a part of this broadcast. Okay, there's no way to guarantee anything. Please keep your kids out of the YouTube app. If you must use the kids, kids app for YouTube, Make sure that you are monitoring them as they watch anything. All right? Inappropriate content is pervasive. So monitor your children. Please don't let them watch videos by themselves. Be there with them as they watch. Be there with them as they watch. 
So I'm going to talk about WhatsApp very briefly. I don't know how popular it is wherever you are in the world. But in Nigeria, where I am, WhatsApp is quite popular. A lot of us use it as long as smartphone users use WhatsApp mostly in Nigeria here. Okay, it's a messaging app as well, um, you know. And it's a very safe app, to be, to be sincere. It's just that because it's a messaging... Hi, Afriscope TV. Thank you for joining. Thank you for being a part of this broadcast. Thank you for inviting your followers as well. Thank you so much for the, for the love. You know, WhatsApp is a messaging app. And so what it means is that content is shared across. You receive and share content all the time. And sometimes I open my phone. I'm wondering, how did this video... Hi, hi, thank you for joining. Hello. You know, I'm wondering, how on earth did this video get to my phone? Because someone shared with me on WhatsApp, my phone automatically downloads the video. And I'm thinking, how on earth... Did this thing get on my phone? This video, this picture. And people, and anybody can, anybody really, can share anything with you on WhatsApp as long as they have your phone number. Except you block them. That is the scary part, right? So it means anybody can share things. If your children are on WhatsApp, they have WhatsApp, you know, apps on their, on their devices. It means that anybody who has your phone number can chat with them on WhatsApp. That is a scary thing. Of course... With it, like any messaging thing, it means they can share inappropriate pornographic content with your children. Your children can use this for sexting. Okay? And they can delete their chats. You will never know what they talked about. Another thing to note about it. Delete the, 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 the history and all the content is gone. Just like that, you know? Bottom line, WhatsApp is, has minimal risk, but there's still that risk of sharing inappropriate content. So you be careful, mama. Let them know what is appropriate to share. Let them know what kind of things they can, they can, you know, share. They should remember that sharing of, um, of pornographic contents is also a criminal behavior. It is. They should remember that. Right? You know, so yes. We, so I've shared um, a few apps with you now. Um, there's also Musical.ly. Musical.ly is um, a social media app, really. And it's just for... It's more for musical stuff. So it's a video community. It allows you to create, to share, to discover short music videos. Videos can be up to 15 seconds. You know, it's, it's a small thing, but all those things are there. And with it, you can have nudity, sexually, um, you know, connotative content can also be shared. Profanity can be shared. Crude content can be shared. So you want to be sure that your, your children are, you know, uh, are safe. Pornography is also there, somewhere locking in the corner there. And like every other social media app, you always have young people there just share things just like that. You have to be careful. Let your children understand what those things are. You check the app out. Know whether it's right for your own child. You know our children are different. Some children are strong character children. They are not easily influenced by whatever they see. But some of our children are, you know, they're not so strong-willed and they can get easily influenced by their peers, by their friends. And so it's important for us to actually, you know, teach them, enlighten them about what is appropriate to share and what is not appropriate to share. Okay, so yes, I've shared a few, a bit of all these apps with you today. There are so many more apps out there that you can also, please Google these things. Know what the dangers are, know what the risk factors are concerning your children so that you can know how to safeguard them. Thank you, everyone, who came to watch today, who came to listen to me. Thank you, Tyron Mills. Thank you for joining. You know, we're talking about apps, the Internet apps that are available on our mobile devices, on the computer, on the Internet, and what the dangers are for our children. It is important for us to know about these dangers, get educated about these dangers, and get enlightened about the dangers that are, that are out there for our children, and know how to safeguard them. From all these dangers. So in the next episode, next week Tuesday, 12, um, about 1.30 p.m. actually, next week Tuesday, we'll be sharing again an another episode of Mom Pods about internet safety and we'll be looking at the strategies that you can employ as a parent to safeguard your children from internet, um, you know, from all the dangers on the internet. So if you have children, please invite your other mom for or your other mom friend your other parents, let them, let them listen in so that we can all share our experiences together, you know, about the dangers of the internet 
and what you as a parent can do to help your children. Until the next time I see you, my name is Olusha Yashiri once again. Thank you so much for being a part of this. I truly appreciate everyone who watched on the replay. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Eloise Wave, for joining. Thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. You can always catch the replay if you're just joining us because we're just about rounding up. Thank you, and I'll catch you again next time on this episode, another episode of Mom Pot with Olusha. Bye, everyone. Thank you for joining. Bye.